Hello, my name is Mr. Wild, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the technique of stippling. This particular project is of Luke Skywalker and three other animated characters voiced by actor Mark Hamill. I've already spent several hours working on this, and now just have the head and neck of Luke Skywalker to finish. Stippling is the technique of systematically placing dots next to each other in a controlled and deliberate manner to achieve varying levels of value from very light to very dark. Some of the factors that I control are how close I place dots next to each other and the size of the pen I'm using. The closer you place dots next to each other, the darker the value you'll achieve. The more spread out the dots are, the lighter the area will appear. The size of the nib of the pen can help create darker values faster by using a larger nib, but to keep areas lighter, use a smaller nib with dots that are more spread out. My materials for this project include Strathmore Bristol Board, Pigma Micron Pens, a Sakura Mechanical Pencil, Kneaded Eraser, Factus Magic Black Eraser, and Kleenex. As I begin adding dots to the face, you can see that I've drawn out his face in pencil and have some interesting lines that wouldn't normally appear on the face. I am working from a photo reference and I often refer to it. With the face, I start with some of the darker areas first. The eyebrows, the eyelashes, the pupils, the nostrils, the shaded area of the ear, and even part of the mouth. I then move to the jawline and the neck. Most of the neck is shaded because of the head creating a cast shadow on the neck. Pen size or nib size is very important. For the darker areas, I use a larger sized nib which will cover the area faster and with fewer dots. One of the things you'll notice as I work on this drawing is that I jump around to different areas of the face without completely finishing one area. This is because I like to build up the dark values a little at a time. You can always go darker, but it's quite challenging to lighten an area once you've put too many dots down. I move in back to the lower jaw and the rest of his ear. Most of the left side of his face will end up with some value as the light source is coming from his right side. Moving back to the area around his eyes, I like to work on both eyes at the same time to help make sure there's good consistency to help the eyes match each other. I'm moving up to the forehead now, and even though I'm drawing a curvy line that I know doesn't exist, it will help define his specific facial features that will help the drawing to resemble him later. In other areas, it's important not to go too dark before getting other values in. Again, you can always go darker, but it's a serious challenge trying to go lighter. You'll also notice that throughout the drawing that I jump all over the place as needed. Every once in a while, you'll notice the Kleenex at the bottom of the screen. 
If my hand ever rests on an area that I've already stippled, I put a Kleenex under that hand. The last thing I want to do is smear the clear and concise dots I've just put down so deliberately. The speed of this clip, most of it, is about eight times faster than real life, and the actual time from start to finish for just the head and the neck is about three hours. As I mentioned earlier, I'm working from a reference photo, and it's important to trust where the values are in your reference photo, because that's going to give the face the resemblance to the actual person. When I pull my hand away from the chin, you'll notice that the darker values aren't very realistic looking, but later, as I continue to add more dots to that area, it's going to help the stippled chin resemble the actual chin. I'm being very precise and deliberate as I add dots to the side of his face. Initially as I'm stippling, I keep those dots fairly evenly spaced. And even as I attempt to darken that space little by little, I strategically place the dots between other dots. One of the things to avoid is this especially in a light value area, and even some of the middle value areas, avoid letting two dots touch. Two small dots touching will form one large dot that will stick out tremendously compared to the other single dots. Occasionally, you may notice Luke Screen lightsaber in the lower left-hand corner. For that part of the drawing, I used a Marvi Uchida light green lip pen. In the video description, I will post all of the materials that I used for this project. Different brands of pens will have different sizes. For the Pigma Micron pens I'm using for this project, the sizes range from the smallest at 005 to the largest at 08. For much of the other parts of the drawing that you did not see me stipple, I mostly used the 08 and the 05, uh, which are the pens with the largest nibs. For most of the face, I used a 01 and the 005 and the 03 also. Now for me, the nose is the scariest part and messing up the nose is the worst way to make the drawing not look like the person. Again, check the values from the reference photo and place the correct values in the correct areas. So dots on a face are kind of scary to add, especially to a lightly valued face. It's not like freckles that can be cute, uh, but instead end up looking or can end up looking more like the chicken pox or measles. If you're careful and deliberate though, as you're stippling faces, the overall image will be seen in values of lights and mediums and darks. At this point in the drawing, I'm just fine-tuning the values by going back and forth, checking my reference photo, adding dots in the right place. Stippling is a meticulous endeavor requiring a detail-oriented focus, but again it's just looking back and forth, finding the darker areas, adding a few more dots, carefully of course, and 
and with intent. When you go in and erase out all the residual pencil lines, you will need to absolutely wait until the ink dots are completely dry. Sometimes I will lay my Kleenex over a section of the drawing and press it with the palm of my hand, but never swipe. The last thing you want to do is smear it. I'll use either or both the kneaded eraser or the Factus black eraser, but I will wait a couple of hours before using the eraser. Now sometimes, when you focus on a very particular section of the drawing, you may have the sense that you've messed up or that you've made a mistake. With stippling, it's important to step back and look at your artwork from a distance, even a few feet. And it's important to do this throughout the drawing. Just don't wait till the very end. Do it periodically throughout your drawing. If the values are in the right place, the overall effect will be brilliant.